Hello and welcome to Hardware Learning. Today we're working on the 2009 Chevy Impala. It is leaking power steering fluid, something fierce. I'm pretty sure it's the high pressure line. I already replaced the power steering pump because it was making noise. Um, but we replaced the pump like a week or two ago and um, re-bled the system, filled it, topped it off, ran for like a week or two. Well, maybe this was like a month ago because it ran for at least a week and then it was bad for like a couple of weeks after that. So. Anyways, pretty sure it's leaking fluid because I just topped it off, took it for a cruise, and then came back, and then like later that day, this was like last weekend, there was fluid on the ground. So we're gonna take the rear bolts out of the front subframe, lower it down, see if we can see the high pressure line that connects to the steering rack itself. Uh, if that's leaking, we have a replaced hose. At the same time, you have to take the power steering pump out. I have a reman power steering pump, put that in. The fresh power steering pump, fresh uh, power steering high pressure line. All right, so the subframe bolts are a 21. We are going to lower those two bolts down, supporting the subframe with our jack. Okay, those lines after we lower the frame a little further. All right, I think that line, this upper line is leaking because it is also wet. So somewhere in this, oh yeah. Okay, so here's our issue. Yuck. We have found our problem. So this power steering line has that sleeve on it and that causes a bunch of snow and salt to build up in there and it corroded. So we're gonna replace that line and hopefully fix our leak. First, I can remove the hose connections to the steering rack that are just up there. And we want to make sure we're loosening the right hose, so it's actually this one up here. I am thoroughly confused. Alright, so the good news is, is uh, I'm pretty sure this upper line is the low pressure hose. And the good news about that is that I don't think I need to disconnect the... Uh, our steering pump although the high pressure line here feels like it just came loose so I may need to do that still but the low pressure hose I can just disconnect right here the bad news is I bought the high pressure line so I need to go back to the store all right so as I showed earlier the hose that was um, leaking was the return line I disconnected it from the steering rack and then I realized that I had I uh, I bought the high pressure assuming that that was going to be the one that leaked. Um, so now I just got the return line and it loops along the front of the subframe like those maniacs. So now I got to take the, uh, the front splash pan off and see where it's all connected on that front subframe. Basically the, the, the return line failed because of that plastic shroud trapping in moisture and presumably road salt. So here we go. So there's a bunch of fasteners for this. Oh, which one's gonna work the best? No one knows, but we're gonna try them all. Unless the first one works really good. First one works really good, sick. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. It worked really good for two, and now it struggles a lot. All right, now I think we've got like seven millimeter screws. Oh yeah, my eyeballs are calibrated. Oh, well, we got some sevens on the actual bumper itself and some tens. All right, so there's four seven millimeter bolts, a handful of plastic fasteners, and three 10 millimeter bolts. Go. 
got this power steering line. It just freaking loops itself for seemingly no good reason. Okay, so what I've done is jack the back of the subframe back up to neutral. Uh, this gives me more access along this front portion of the return line. That's kind of, it, it's clamped into some uh, little snaps, but we can now kind of weasel our way out. So as you can see, Start of pulling the line that way. Now I believe it's connected in one place right there. We'll get that, looks like maybe a 13. All right, so this 15 is right above that CV. And then we will go up top and remove. Where it connects to the uh, power steering pump. Oh, I didn't realize I wasn't recording, but remove this clip from the hose at the power steering pump. Slide that back on, and now I think the full return line is out. You pull it out and run the new one in. You're gonna wanna take this little air dam off. It's four uh, plastic retainers, or three plastic retainers up in here, like something along. Anyways, however way that goes in, there's four plastic like screw type retain or three of these things, which suck. I had to cut one because you literally can't you can't reach it behind the uh, behind here unless I this out. But I'm lazy. And then you're gonna want to take the front splash pan off because the cooling line runs along the front subframe right in front of the engine. I, in hindsight, would have cut these hoses here and here. Uh, this one runs along the back of the steering rack. This one goes to the line that goes to the power steering pump. And those connections are right in here. The hardest part was getting the new line in. What I did was, the fresh lines, I took these two hoses off because they're just spring style instead of these crimp style. The OEM ones are like a crimp style instead of a spring retainer style. So you can, you can keep them this section separate, and then also this hose off. So you just have the hard line to the front of the engine. First off, disconnect. There's a retainer for the wiring harness to the sum frame. Disconnect that so that you can sneak this up there, back there. And once it's back there, you'll rotate up, and you'll be able to slide these underneath the CV axle, and this Underneath that harness, there's uh, two snap things for the hard lines over here. There's ones right by the accessory belts, um, like right here-ish. You'll be able to get that cooling line in much easier from the front. I tried going in from the wheel well, did not work. It's still, you know, a little bit of a bear, but I got that in in like five, 10 minutes. And then adjust it on the snaps that are here, here, and then there's one where these all these hoses meet. Um, and from there, it's uh, you'll need an 18 millimeter socket or 18 millimeter wrench, 10 millimeters of Phillips, uh, 10 millimeters for the front splash guard, Phillips for the little dam thing, pliers for the spring clips on the hoses, and you should be good. The easiest way to connect the 18 millimeter bolt that's on the power steering pump is from the top, or on the steering rack, the return line off the steering rack from the top, like so. Let's reach down in here, start tightening that 18 millimeter that's on the top of the steering rack. The new hose comes with an O-ring on the uh, for the side that connects to the steering rack, you wanna make sure to slot that on. So now that I have the hoses all connected, before you lower the car back down, you're gonna wanna fill up your power steering reservoir. Turn the car to accessory, don't turn the car on. Key in, one, two, and then go lock to lock. 
This will basically prime the system with power steering fluid because we just left it all on the ground. Um, you'll do this several times, I don't know, five to ten times. Go check your fluid level, add accordingly. Keep doing this uh, probably two to three times until the fluid level is full. And then you'll be able to put the car back together and you, you should, if once the car is weighted, you turn the car on and you hear the power steering whine when you steer, repeat the, the process. So just jack the front up. You don't have to put jack stats on if you're not going out of the car, but just jack it up so the power steering system isn't loaded. Go lock to lock and uh, eventually it should bleed all the air out of the system and you should be good to go. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Impala videos because I'm sure something else is going to break on it.